uh, at this moment, we're going to prepare for the word of God. I'm not going to be bringing the word, but I got a brother. He's a, he's a man of God. He's a brother Charles. He's going to be bringing the word. Amen. Give Charles a hand of applause. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. I'm stirred. I'm stirred in my faith. I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful for this ministry. I just want to honor our pastor. Thank you. Help me give God a thank you for this man of God. Help me thank God for this man. That this, man this ministry is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. This ministry has made a big difference in my life, the discipleship that there's a pattern for your maturity. There's a pattern for your maturity to grow in Christ. And that's the, the task of the church. So God gives us ministry gifts, the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of teaching, the gifts of the pastor, the gifts of the apostle, the, the gifts of the evangelist. And so that's the mission of the church. And so me, myself, I'm a, a humble servant of the Lord. I'm a servant of the Lord, and, and my pastor asked me to bring this word, and I said yes. I said yes and amen. So God is is maturing me to be able to do that. And I'm, I'm thankful I'm here. I'm thankful I'm here. I'm thankful that you all are here. You're in the right place. Amen? You're in the right place. There's no better place to be than in the house of God, to see his glory, to be with brothers and sisters, that there's times of refreshing, there's, time, there's, there's pouring out of anointing that you cannot get by yourself. There's levels of strength that you cannot get apart from the brethren. So we're here today to give God glory to lift up a service, a holy offering to him. The Bible says, open your mouth and he will fill it with praise. It's spiritual. Open your mouth. Have faith that he will fill it with praise. That God is the God of fillings. He wants to fill vessels. There's appointments that are, that are divinely appointed for you to be filled. So I thank you. I thank you for being here. I thank you for your faithfulness to come to the house, for God's faithfulness to get us into order. And, um, yeah, I'm honored. I'm honored and I'm privileged to bring this word. The first Sunday of the new year, and I'm honored. I'm honored to be here on this new day, this new year, this Sunday. And we know as partakers of the, the covenant of promise, the new covenant, that's just the new covenant, right? Yeah. It's not as if it's, it's, it's something brand new. It, actually, the new covenant came before the old covenant. It's the covenant of promise. It's the covenant that was preached to Abraham, and Abraham accepted it by faith. So we enter the new covenant by faith, and God makes all things new. Glory to God. God makes all things new through the, the power of the new covenant, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through us coming to him, being reconciled back to him by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the new covenant. So we see the newness in God's creation. This morning, I woke up before the sunrise it's not hard to do this time of year. It's the sun rises at like 7, a little after 7 o'clock. And, uh, but I'm waiting for the sunrise. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and then comes up bright light, new sunrise. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that God's mercy is made new with every sunrise. Every sunrise. So you see the evidence. And that's common grace. That's common mercy. God makes the sun to shine on the righteous and the unrighteous. That's common, but... What I'm here to do is to inspire us and to, to bring this word that, that we might pursue a deeper level of grace, that we might pursue a deeper relationship with God where the, the, the common grace, the common mercy is not enough, that we can't survive on just that, that same plane as yesterday, that, that you have to let that light come into your life. The Bible says, arise, awake, awake from your sleep, you who were dead, and let the light of Christ shine in your life. So everything that you're considering, let it be through the light of the gospel. Yeah. Everything that you're considering. The Bible says in Proverbs, acknowledge me in all your ways and I will direct your steps. Yeah. So as you consider, as you're, as you're here in this new year, my prayer is for a new hunger after God, a new desire after God to, to really seek him and press into this kingdom for his purpose. His purpose is to make all things new. His purpose is to have an open heaven. This is his purpose. And we, we're here as the church to honor him and to, and to be ministers of this new covenant, ministers of this grace. This is our privilege. This is our honor. So I thank and praise God for the, the new, the new sunrise that we serve a God of new. 
He's making all things new. You are a new creation. You are his, his workmanship. Amen? You are his workmanship created for good works that have, already been, that have already been laid out in front of you. So that you have a destiny with God. You have a, a, a path with God, a purpose. And this, this, this word right here decodes your life. That's right. That you can find your purpose here in this word. That you can find true meaning here in this word. And so there's, there's deception, there's lies out in the world. But we have, to get, we have to look at everything through the truth of God's word. This, this is how we grow. This is how you grow is through understanding of the truth of God's word. To get yourself in a place where you're fed by this word. Where you grow. It's, it starts as milk. And then you grow thereby. And then it turns to meat. You seek the deeper things in the word. The mysteries. And you keep coming and you keep learning and you keep, you keep being edified. So this is who, who, this is who my God is. This is the God that I serve. That he's called me by his loving kindness. He died for me while I was still a sinner. This is the God I serve that I didn't even know who he was, but he called me. It's his goodness that leads to repentance. And this is, this is why I praise him. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Because he has delivered me out of the hands of my adversary. You didn't, I didn't even know. Nobody will keep my mouth silent anymore because they don't know where I came from. They don't know. You may see me here, but you don't really know the transformation. People only see the outer man. But God sees the inner man. He sees what you've been through. He sees your struggles. He knows you. His, this word, this word is alive and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sh- sword. It's able to pierce the bone from the marrow, the soul from the spirit. It's able to discern and to judge the thoughts and the intentions of your own heart. God knows your heart. And this is, this is the word that I preach. This word is alive and active. So as you're sitting here, as, this, as the Holy Spirit enters this place, as, as he ministers to you through me, I just pray for transformation. I pray for a change. I pray for... God, to set even the broken things right. Yes, yes. This is who he is. That he's here as our ever-present help. That he will never leave us nor forsake us. He has given us the spirit of adoption to cry out to him, Abba, Father. This is the God I serve. This is the God I serve. That he is, he is responsible for you, for us. He is your portion. He is your portion, amen? That he has given you everything that you need pertaining to life and to godliness. This is who he is. So you are loved. You, you sitting here are loved more than you could ever know. To the, the deeper things of God, the mysteries of God is really how much he really loves you. How much he loves you. How much he's called you since the foundations of the earth. He's called you since, he's known you since before he formed you. And you're, and you're, you're ready. You're becoming equipped for mighty exploits. There are mighty exploits. There are warriors here. In the kingdom of God, there are soldiers being lifted up for this last day's army. And this is the will of the church. This is the mission of the church. To, to the train up, to equip, to present every man perfect before Christ. So I'm happy. I'm thankful that I get to be here for this. I want to see the glory of God. I want to see, see the hand of God move every single day in my life. So this is, the, this is New Year's Day. This is a special day. This day represents a putting away of the old. It's a putting away of the old. The old year is gone, and the new year has come. It's, 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 it's symbolic. Now, we know that it's just a day, but it's symbolic of, of a new thing. So many face a reality on, on today. There's a reality that we all come to, to grips with today, that the calendar has changed and there's a, there's a reality that we too need to change. Amen. There's a reality that what you were doing before has worked, is sufficient up to this point, but you need to change even yet still. That there is a change that needs to take place. You might say, I'm here right now, but I need to get here. So I need to change this thing in order to get there. Or you might say, I, I'm weak in this area. And I need to get strong in that area. So you focus on that area. So this is, this is a day where we, 
where these thoughts go through our mind, and we say, what am I, what am I doing? How do I, how do I change? How do I change? So many people make resolutions. Many people today, this day, they make New Year's resolutions. It could be save money. It could be get healthier. Those are all good things. Those are all fine things. The word resolution, what it really means is a strong determination to do something. That's the definition of resolution, a strong determination to do something. So that's power. So me, with my, my lens of thought, I look at Proverbs, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That there's power in your heart, there's power in, in the governance of your heart. That, that you have a heart's desire, and you pursue that thing, that treasure of your heart is, where you, is what you pursue. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So this is, this is spiritual. We have to compare spiritual things with spiritual in the house of God. We have to get this level of understanding. Because through practice, we get discernment to be able to tell good from evil. We get discernment to be able to tell good from evil. Because in this new year, in these last days, not everything is good. We know that. There are going to be things that are